It is the time of the year commonly known as Black Friday when retailers everywhere feel pushed to buy their products and Tinko has given me actually two vacuum cleaners for us to look at this week. This is the first one, the Tinko A10 Hero. So provided by Tinko for this review, put that out there now, but hey, unlike or as well as all my other Tinko reviews, this will be honest unbiased and um, show you what it is and I've made a cordless wall so we can put this thing up and see it as it should be for once in one of my videos so let's have a look Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Yes, Black Friday is upon us now and I need something sharp to open the box with. I've just realised, and yes Tinko, I've obviously taken part in Black Friday. The link in the description is where you want to go for the cost of this because obviously the cost of it today, the day of filming this, might be slightly different to the cost on the week of Black Friday that you are watching this. So that's about 170, 180 pounds normally to give you, you know, a little bit of context of the situation. So yes, A10 Hero, very nice Tinko box, very typical of the other machines that I have had, tells you all the features there. Look, the 105 watts of ultra powerful suction, which is a little bit odd, since the box somewhere else says 350, so maybe that's in low, because this will have, I think, multi-powered modes. Yeah, let's get into it and have a look. Find which way the box opens, it will be this way. So, pop the two tabs, lift it up, and bonk, there it is. Very nice. Oh, indeed. And yes, the floor is filthy, because I have just built this, so we could use this to clean up all of the mess. So what do we have? We have the instruction manual, the cleaning tool and some fixings for it to go on the wall. Oh, where to start now? Well, we'll just put it all out. We have ourselves a wand in blue. Very nice, pretty sturdy. Nice wand there. Oh, the back of it. Ah, there we go. Look, there's some space. Oh. We have the filter cleaning tool, which also houses your spare filter. We'll leave that out for there. We have a bracket. Not entirely sure where that goes as of yet, because none of my other Tinko vacuums have that bracket. The wall bracket. We should be needing that. There we go. Very nice indeed. Mini turbo head. Oh, it's of a better design than others I have used. It doesn't do too bad of a job, really. Then we have our combination. Oh, not in the bag, look. How nice. Combination, dusting and upholstery brush. Little crevice tool there, look. And, oh, hello. Ah, and the charger, yes. Nice charger there. Decent quality feeling brick. Then under here... We have the main carpet and hard floor nozzle, which is there with the initial impressions are, it's a very nice feeling little size, we have LEDs, brush strips, ooh, that's very stiff indeed, and these ones are very soft, so ooh, I am actually a little bit excited about that see how it performs in the real world and then inside of this bag here we have the, the, the machine itself which is very fetching in its white and blue register now for your guarantee you get two years i think with this there we go look oh huh? Show you my warranty number, you can register my machine if you want. This is a, as I like to do, being a machine that I gifted, this will never see warranty because, yeah, 
not quite how it works. VA101000 UK and hey, it has some power in it. Ooh. Not too bad at all. We do only have one bar of battery though. Oh no, now it's red. So there we go. I do have to do what I have planned, which is I'm going to take a short break, peruse the manual so I know roughly what I'm talking about as I show you this machine and get it put up onto the cordless wall. So come back when that's done. Charger assembly, as I shall call it, or wall dock assembly is fairly easy. You see the vacuum cleaner actually charges by simply plugging the DC jack into the battery. Obviously you can do this without having to have the wall at all. It is completely unlike the Tinko Pure 1S12 which has to be mounted to the wall because it has to sit on those two charging points there. So I am very glad that they have amended that for the A10 at least. You can also take the battery out completely and have this wherever you want it and just pop this on the side in your kitchen like so. But yeah, we're going to mount this dock so that we can make the cordless wall something truly special. Oh, so we shall slide the battery back into there. But yes, when you dock the thing, it just lines up with that little hole. It doesn't even line up that little hole. Oh, I thought it was for that hole there. Oh, look. Ah. That's very clever, look. You can charge another battery by just popping it in there and then running the DC jack through that hole. Oh, that makes much more sense. So yes, I need to put a bit more slack on the cable in order for it to reach the charging dock. So how are we going to do this? We should dock the machine, we'll plug the DC jack in and then we'll want a little bit of slack. I'd say that's going to be absolutely plenty. Oh, and then yeah, you just push the flex down into the charger around where it needs to go. Nice thick cable on the charger and then yeah, mount it to the wall. And with that, the A10 Hero is mounted to the wall of cordless, charging nicely, probably about to get pooed on for the first time by a green cheek conure. So I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea now, really, and let the A10 Hero charge up a bit. I'm going to read the manual, and yeah, we shall, well, first of all, just clean up this front room, because yeah, there is a lot of dirt everywhere, really, for building the wall of cordless. So it should be a nice little demonstration of it. Back in a bit. Hey, next, stop eating these, I know, I like. Okay, that's had good couple of minutes now, so we shall unplug the charger, take it out of its dock, and then actually plug the battery straight back in because I've forgotten that we have a few little stickers to look at and remove, and we can have a look at the bin. So yes, battery is on charge elsewhere, very nice. We have the HEPA post motor filter there. Interesting to see how dirty that will get. It doesn't come apart anymore, although it is a, oh, actually it could do. There is a little screw in there, so you can probably take this off so you don't have to wash all of this back bit. You can buy spares from Tinko, and that just slots in there like so. The bin is here, and we have two ways of emptying it. Once I've removed this sticker from the post motor filter, which is fitted in there. So it says to replace it every half a year, wash and dry it monthly, which I would recommend. Having used the Pure One S12 with experience of these batteries, yeah, you want to be washing this filter very, very regularly indeed. And that goes just up there, look, very nice indeed. You can empty it with the filter in to, you just pop the bin out like so. And I think there is also a way to remove the bin completely from the cleaner. And the manual says that you can rinse and wash the bin up, which yes, you probably can, I would let it dry though. Ah, all this comes out very nicely anyway, so you could probably just give that a good old wipe down indeed. Here is the inner assembly, which holds the filter and acts as the cyclone. Pop that back in there like so. We shall refit it to the machine. There is just a hook at the front and then it clicks into place like so. We also have, oh, I love this trigger lock, because you can use it to turn the machine on and off, I think. Yes, you can. It just pushes 
the button down. So it's great, you can just be holding it and just flick, oh, flick it with your thumb and turn the thing on and off. Also, a very quick look at the floor tool while it's all shiny and clean. Floor tool should be very simple to take apart. There's just a half screw turn there and this bit pops off and then, ah, here we go, look, you just remove the whole thing and off oh, these, this particular row of brushes. Oh, don't forget, we haven't used this yet. I'm hoping it's gonna, you know, really work well. We have a soft row there and then we have a edge row, look. I've just noticed that. But, oh, actually, no, it's not an edge row, but, oh, that's clever. That is where the drive cog goes. This isn't an edge brush. This, look, it's a, can I show it? Yeah, look, it's a dust cover, I think. It basically seals that whole area. So unlike um, a certain other cordless vacuum cleaner of the past, which had a terrible reputation for this bit getting all gunked up, hopefully it shouldn't. That's very nice to see. You have good access to clean everything as well. Nice pivoty action. Yeah, it's very good indeed. So we shall pop our brush roll back in. I like that. I like that a lot. Put our edge clip, oof, ah, dropping it. <laughs> like a slow fall from my hands. Turn that to the locked position, and yeah, I think it's now finally time to turn the cleaner on and see how it runs. That is amazing actually, it's picking up all the fine sawdust in one pass, it's grooming the rug as well. Oh, this is a nice floor head indeed, it's, it's okay, seems very manoeuvrable, nice bright LED light, let's up the power to max. I'll put it back down because it only lasts for about 10 minutes on max and obviously that's with a full battery, not one that's barely on two bars. Oh my goodness, this is really, really good on this rug. Wow, that stiff row of bristles is really noticeable and good. Let's move over to the short pile because hey, you never know. Yeah, it pretty likes this too, it, it clamps itself down, you can feel it sucking down on the carpet. Pretty good edge as well. Can't get right down there, but of course you can take off the wand and go grab our crevice tool and... Get the bits up. A very good two out of three there. Let's up the ante a little bit. On the hard floor when I have my other phone just out of shot here, recording the back of it. Yeah, I'll even show you the proof. So that if it spits dirt out the back, which it shouldn't because it has a very nice row of felt around the edge, we'll see there is rice used Dyson Zorb here from DCO4 Zorbs to after video, which we'll see on the channel. Get subscribed if you like Dyson DCO4s. Straight up, one pass, nothing out the back. Very nice indeed. Well, that is actually very, very impressive. This floor tool, with its stiff row of brushes, I would rate higher than the Tinko Pure 1S12, which although has a row of quite dense brushes, I, I don't know, they they have, there is a difference there, folks. The Pure 1S12 is very good, but that's just very good whilst being effortless. Let's look at the filter. Now, obviously, if you see my Pure 1S12 videos, filter does collect dust and dirt and it hasn't 
actually, on that exact scenario. Wow, fair enough. Okay, I was I was gonna have a lead that into the filter cleaning tool. This is the manual version of the tool. It is not electronic on this. This is obviously one of the cost saving reasons and to be honest it's a pretty decent one because it still works all right you can lock it on of course and then you just turn and that cleans your filter gets all the fine dust off but i'll be honest i would just wash it you're gonna have a better time on it i was sort of hoping that we could you know come on to the S12, let's open up its filter look, because its filter, and I've, I've been using this look, is a bit dusty. And as we can see, they are exactly the same filter. So we can fit this one into here, there is one in there, and then we'll see just how good it is. Oh, hang on, I'm going to flip it round so I can turn this side. Wow, it's clean! Spotless, I saw it go. Wow. Okay, that's pretty good. Obviously, has it. Hang on, we've got to be careful here. That goes into there. <laughs> you know what? It hasn't chucked it all straight back onto there either. That's not bad. Of course, I have my Tinko Pure 1S12 electric version that the filter goes in there. And in fact, it. They haven't changed the tool design look. So you can use, <laughs> if you can find one of these online, I don't know if you can buy it as a used part. Well, we don't need to let that go through its cycle. You can chop and change around. So, you know, if, if this doesn't get the filter quite as dirty as this did, which we shall see, we shall see. Stay subscribed and liked and et cetera, et cetera, because we're going to have a big mess test with lots of these cleaners soon, a couple of days actually, so stay tuned and if it is going to be a problem, we'll find out. We can dump this outlook like so and then get the turbo tool and clean it straight back up again. Oh, hang on, let's just make it a bit... Not bad. That's not bad, not bad. It's not an aggressive turbo brush by any means, but it, it does work really rather well. Don't seem to be able to easily remove the brush roll for maintenance though, so bear that in mind, I suppose. Could you on the older one? No, you couldn't. This is exactly the same, ah, the same part actually, FB16. Yeah, exactly the same part, just with a slightly different aesthetic on it so yeah you can't remove the brush rather cleanly but it's all right you know this is this is a it's not a budget vacuum it's sort of one step up budget lower premium end of the market shall we say that's what we'll do rather than this which is the top of the rain very expensive one which is still very good we have seen it this is not for that this is for this i really quite like this especially for its price point. I hope it's on a good offer for you on the day this video goes out. And hey, if you've got one, let me know what you think. So that is the unboxing for this particular cleaner, the A10. Stay tuned because this is the first video. Tomorrow we're going to have a look at the Floor One S3 that Tinko gave me to review over a year ago now. Then Oh, another unboxing of another Tinko vacuum. Then we're going to have a big old mess test, which is one of the reasons we have the wall of cordless, which will have one more added to it in a day or two. And then we're going to use all of these and a couple more to chuck some muck and have a good old clean up, really, and see what happens and which one performs best. And then we'll have a bit of a roundup at the end of the week with all of my Tinko stuff, and we shall give our thoughts and opinions on the machine. So, there we go, it's unboxed. Initial impressions are, I really like that floor head. Oh, that's a good floor head, especially compared to some of the other ones that 
you can get. But hey, you know, we all have our pros and cons. So yes, thank you very much, Tinko, for sending me this to review. We should do our best. Thank you very much for watching. Links are in the description to buy this at whatever the Black Friday price is. I hope you get a good one. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. We've got a video every day this week. Um, you're going to have fun. Yeah, because there's two normal ones interdispersed in all the Tinko madness just so we don't all go insane. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I, and definitely these Tinkos, will see you soon. Bye-bye.